This is weekdays on your iHeart Radio station. It's Lee here today, and it's time to check with Craig at Olverston Real Estate for another peek inside. Hello, Craig. How's things, mate? Hello, Lee. Things are great. A little bit gloomy outside, but a bit of liquid sunshine never goes astray. We like the sound of that. Today, we're going to cover the five biggest pricing mistakes home sellers make. Uh, obviously, this is something that happens quite regularly if you're seeing the need to address it. Mate, it's been 21 years of real estate. I've seen it from day dot, but... Um, it's just human nature, but uh, we've got to try and, once again, we use that word emotion. Let's take the emotion out of it and let's look at facts, and uh, that's what will help a, a home seller no end. So the sale price of any property usually falls somewhere between the seller's hopeful expectations and the buyer's market knowledge and value assessment. Mm-hmm. The, the trick to suing the deal uh, in that seller to buyer gap, as we call it, is pricing a property so that buyers don't ignore it and see it as a bridge too far for value compared to other similar properties in the region or area. Now, even in hot markets where buyers are competing for property, sellers who overshoot the runway can find themselves in for a long wait whilst other similar properties are flying off the shelves. Vendors may not realise it, but they may be helping to uh, sell other competing properties when they ignore what the market says about value and they stubbornly stick to their expectant price. Mm. Now, the scenario has played out regularly all over the country and more so when we're operating in an even or, as we are now, almost a, a buyer's market. And uh, we're seeing it locally with some properties sitting unsold longer than the days on market averages. Okay. So here are five pricing mistakes you should avoid when offering your home to the market. Let's go. Number one, allowing an agent to buy your listing. Property listings are the lifeblood of any agent. An unskilled or less than ethical agent are only too happy to tell you a potential sale price that may have you prematurely popping the champagne, only to find out pretty quickly that the market has a completely different perception of value. Number two, Basing your property's price on other similar properties that have not sold. If you believe the house up the road, which has been on the market for four months, is inferior to yours, therefore making yours worth more, think again. Work off local, recent and similar sold properties. Similar on-the-market properties are your competition. Similar sold properties are your comparables or market evidence. Ah, of course. Yes. Now, this is my favourite, number three. Getting advice from the butcher, the baker and the candlestick maker or your Uncle Ron, who was in real estate from April to September 1992, (laughs) about what your place might be worth. Uncle Ron's, I love him. Unless one or all have bought and sold 10 properties in the local area in the last six months, seek other more relevant and reliable sources of knowledge and data. Might, it might give Uncle Ron the flick then by the sound of it. Yeah, give Uncle Ron the flick. If he was in real estate for six months, that was for a reason. <laughs> no, number four, let's leave the price off and see what buyers think. The first thing buyers think is, no, oh, this mob want too much. Almost all of your inquiries will be buyers asking how much do they want for it. And that's if they bother to make contact. Now, Karen and I, we're helping one of our sons to buy in South East Queensland at the moment. And no price properties are dominating the listings. Yeah, well. Basically because the market has softened, so agents don't have the cojones to guide their vendors on what will represent an attractive list price. And what people need to realise too about leaving a price on is that realestate.com, the biggest property website in Australia, they've now got a filter that asks buyers if they only want to see properties with prices. Yeah. So number five. You've done all the research, maybe you've paid an independent value for a report, you might have asked 14 local agents for their opinions, Geez, that's a lot of coffee and scotch finger biscuits. <laughs> um, you, you've attended some open homes in the area and sussed out the competition, and you are pretty confident you know what your property or where your property needs to be priced to sell. But then you decide, look, we'll put on another 50000 for negotiation. Bah, bah, you know, the family feud buzzer, it's highly likely that cream you placed on top for negotiation will curtail the appetite of any buyer in your price range. Price your property to be in the market, not on it. So pricing any property for sale can be a real balancing act. What you want 
as opposed to what the buyers will actually pay. Yeah. Buyers have more data and online tools at their disposal to determine what a place is worth even before they've made a phone call or set foot inside the door. Now, there's two very simple ways we know if a property has been priced to meet market sentiment. Oh, okay. Number one, all you hear is the birds chirping. Gribs and drabs as far as buyer inquiry goes and nobody turning up to open homes. We have, we have the luxury of seeing how many potential buyers view a property on the big websites. If the views online are growing, but the inquiries and inspections are basically non-existent, <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. Right, eh? The flip side of that, we get emails, we get calls, text messages are, are constantly coming in. Uh, Look at all potential buyers are turning up to open homes. And if that's the case, you know you are on or at least around the money. Yeah, right. So here's two little... Two little things to consider. Price it right, and the buyers will have you in sight. Price it high, watch the buyers fly. Yep. Vendors may set the price, but buyers determine the value. So that's all it in a nutshell. So if anyone's got any questions about selling or buying in this current market, don't hesitate to drop me a line. Uh, just craig at alvestonrealestate.com, that's the email. Or check out our Facebook page. Sweet. Real okay. Message. Lovely. Yeah. Um, have you got a quote for us this week? I've got a ripper quote for us this week. The man who seeks free advice rarely listens. He who pays for it is all he is. Naturally. All right, mate. Thanks. It's Craig Heppel from Olvis Real Estate with a peek inside. We'll do it again in a week. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Lee.